Welcome to rebuilding a Stuart Double Ten V steam engine part 11. Making the cladding for the second cylinder, gland packing, fitting the exhaust flange and bolting both cylinders to the standards. In exactly the same way as I made the first piece of cladding for the engine, I used a cardboard template. I've marked the positions from the cardboard template onto the metal sheet. And in this clip I'm drilling the mounting holes using my small Proxon drill press on the bench. Here I'm starting the job of shortening the bolts in exactly the same way as I showed in a previous episode. And once I drilled the pilot hole in the cladding, I used a quarter inch drill bit in my larger drilling machine to drill the hole for the exhaust flange. Time to bolt it all together. Please note I don't always get this right. In this case I think I've probably been lucky. Often I will drill holes in the wrong places. Some of the jobs that you see me doing in my videos really can be quite tricky and it's not helped by videoing the process I keep having to look at the camera's viewfinder. I've missed some great shots in the past by filming the back of my hand by mistake. The cladding is now fitted to the cylinder using the new mounting holes that are drilled in the cylinder. All I need to do now is trim the cladding to perfectly fit the cylinder. This is a small silicone o-ring and I'm fitting this to the exhaust flange adapter. I can seal the threads easily using Loctite 542 as you see here. But I do like the belt and braces approach and the o-ring cleans up the gap between the exhaust flange adapter and the cladding. It may have been a better idea to use a black o-ring but I don't have any of those. To finish off the fitting of the exhaust flanges I used a pair of circuit pliers and now they're both in the right position, well more or less. Just to recap, this is what the engine looked like before I started working on it. There's a bit of a difference now. It's a pity the man who did the piping didn't do it properly, because the rest of the engine is well made. The last piece of gland packing that I used was a bit short, so I've cut two slightly longer pieces. I'm not going to show the process in its entirety, I've shown that previously. Here I'm fitting the gland nut in place, first tightening the gland nut and then backing it off slightly. Here I'm applying some oil and with the help of the oil the piston rod moves very freely in and out of the gland. I'm putting a small amount of Loctite 542 on the threads. This is not to seal them particularly, it's just to tighten them up and stop the part from working loose when it's in service. That's one down, here's the other gland with the unevenly machined nut. And in exactly the same way as previously shown, I tighten the gland nut and then back it off slightly. If you don't do that and the gland is too tight, two things can happen. One is excessive friction and the other problem can be scoring the piston rod. Time to fit the first of the cylinders after a general application of some steam oil. Even though I'm not going to be currently running it on steam until the engine is finished, I'm still using steam oil for lubricating the cylinders. That's because some oils will cause a problem with the silicone o-rings. In this clip I'm using the point of my scriber to align the lower cylinder cover and the gasket. And now I can tightly hold the cylinder in place while I turn the engine over to insert the bolts. I'm double checking the alignment by using the right angled part of my scriber. That's not strictly necessary, the bolts will only go into the holes if everything lines up. Here I'm using an allen key to tighten the bolts. The entire job is feeling a lot better than it did previously. The allen bolts are not a tight fit in the holes like they were before. Once I fitted the cylinder and tightened all the bolts, I applied copious amounts of lubricating oil to the moving parts on the engine. This is not cylinder steam oil, this is ordinary lubricating oil for steam engines. After connecting my electric drill to the crankshaft and carefully pressing the trigger, I find that the engine is very free indeed, so in no time at all I can run it at a high speed quite safely. This is miles better than it was two videos ago when it was really stiff and lumpy and made a knocking noise. Very similar in fact to an old girlfriend that I used to know. I can even turn the engine just by the crankshaft and it turns over very easily. Yet the pistons are great fit in the cylinder thanks to the o-ring. Don't forget when using o-rings the piston can be slightly smaller than the cylinder. Not too small though. Before finishing this piston I removed one thou. So that's two thou overall smaller than the diameter of the cylinder. In this clip in exactly the same way as I fitted cylinder number one, I'm fitting cylinder number two, and here's the allen bolt going into the part that I repaired. 
and here's the same Allen bolt fully tightened up. And the good news is, the part didn't break again, so I think this joint should be okay. I wish you could be in the workshop with me on this one, because I've connected my electric drill to the engine, and it is absolutely as smooth as silk. I'm going to run it at a high speed for a while, to see what colour the oil turns that I've applied to the cylinder. Generally, when running in or breaking in engines, this process allows any metal-to-metal -metal contact to be smoothed out. But as far as the cylinders are concerned, there isn't any metal-to-metal -metal contact, it's O-ring-to-metal contact. So I'm going to run it for a while and just see how much black residue there is. I ran the engine using the electric drill for quite a lot longer than I show here. And I'm not seeing much black oil at all. The oil is a very good colour. All I see is a bit of polishing of the cylinder bores. And that's a good thing. The bores were okay, but one of them had a little bit of rust left in it, which appears to have disappeared now. Everything about this job is looking considerably better than it did a couple of episodes ago. That's it for this one. Stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.